Hey everyone, welcome to week 69. Today's day five. This is our last day on our study week. The subject matter for this week has been elephants. Today we're going to try to configure an image without reference, you know, based upon all the things that we've gathered throughout the week. So next week, new theme. We're going to be here. Thank you. Bye. Okay, let's get started. This is day five. This is Friday. This is our last day on our study week. And the subject of our study hasn't changed for this week. It has been the amazing elephant. So throughout the week, we started off with a very simple, straightforward profile that we did on Monday where we tried to recognize shapes. That's all that we were doing with the hopes of identifying the relationship between those shapes and constructing an idea of the proportions of an elephant. That one was tough for me. I actually did a couple of drawings after day one as a sort of homework where I was trying to see if I remember the correct relation between the bigger shapes that I had identified. I could tell you right now that the head was giving me trouble. For some reason, I could understand the bigger shapes of the body correctly. I could spot the scapula, I could spot the backbone, I could even make sense of the pelvis. And I was understanding mechanically how those legs would work, but I just couldn't really place the head in the right spot. And if I did, I was making it either too large or too small. So that was something that I had to kind of work through. But it was cool because the next day, it wasn't really about protecting those proportions that I had worked you know, really hard to understand. I mean, not super hard. We're talking about a day here. <laughs> so, I mean, I put all my efforts in trying to understand those shapes. But for the second day, I was like, let's throw all of this out the window and let's see how I perceive this elephant, how I perceive these individual shapes that are part of the makeup of the elephant. And specifically, I was drawn, and I still am actually, I was drawn towards the character of the legs. You know, I used to think, obviously I'm going from memory here, but I used to think that the uh, legs, even the front legs or the hind legs of the elephant were just massive. I mean, every single part of the elephant is massive, so we could stop this argument right there. But I thought that proportionately the legs were really, really big and had to be super, super strong because this is a land animal that walks, you know, on its four legs. So those legs have to withstand the tons of weight that an elephant weighs. So I thought they had to be incredibly powerful and massive. And again, of course they are. But when looked in relationship to the body, it was really interesting. You know, they feel almost lanky, which makes no sense at all. So for Tuesday's painting, I was like, okay, let's push this. Let's make this elephant almost athletic. Like it could change directions on a dime. And I thought that that was super cool. I mean, and this is something that we hinted at on Tuesday. I wish I could say that it's something that I further developed. But you guys have heard me say this. All those things would take time. There's no other way around it. If I was really, really interested in trying to examine those gestures and how to push those proportions, a week is not enough. I mean, a painting is not enough because we only dedicated a single painting to investigating gesture, and that's not nearly enough. You know, we have to do dozens and dozens of paintings, maybe hundreds upon hundreds of drawings, just trying to understand and figure out what is it that we want to get from the distortions we are going to impose on this figure. And if they go against the nature of an elephant, then we have to work those things out. It has to, in the end, even if it sounds irrational, it has to make sense. So again, super fun painting on Tuesday, but one painting is not enough to understand how to push gesture. For Wednesday, we kind of mixed it up. We were trying to emphasize the pseudo-structure that we identified on Monday's effort, and we were mixing it with the idea of gesture that we came upon on Tuesday's painting. And when we put all of that together, it was very cool to say, okay, we can not just concentrate on a single elephant, but pair a couple of elephants together and see how they interact with each other. And what is the coolest way that you can do that? Well, you can paint dueling elephants. And that was super, super cool because 
Now it's not just a gesture, but it's a gesture at the service of an action. And it's an action of one elephant that prompts a reaction from another elephant. So we're actually constructing a ton of really cool relationships there. Now for yesterday's painting, it was something that was trying to mix all of the things that we had learned from previous days together, where structure was there, a bit of gesture was there, the idea of how not a single elephant, but you know, a large number of elephants would relate to each other and would construct not just the idea of bringing together single concepts of elephants, but hopefully creating an idea of what a herd actually is, a parade of elephants. There is a singular quality to a herd. And what better way to try and tackle such a complex subject matter than doing it in an atmosphere that is also enveloping that herd. There is no real way of understanding this herd as something that could be cut out. It is such a part of the atmosphere. It dissolves itself so much into the atmosphere. The air actually envelops members of this herd that in the end, what you're painting is almost like the single habitat that encompasses this idea of herd. You're not trying to dissect the single elements that make up the wholeness of the image. What you're trying to access is this idea of a world that holds together all these elements that are disposed in the uh, picture plane. That was super, super exciting. It gave me an opportunity to say, yes, I'm painting elephants, but I'm also painting a bigger idea of what it means when a bunch of elephants come together and couple that with atmosphere, which is something that I absolutely love. So these elephants disappearing into this atmosphere was something super, super cool to paint. And recognizing that if I could understand the tusks as a repeating pattern, then it was super easy to talk about depth and to hint the number of elephants that would be on this herd without really over explaining what was going on. So very nice painting yesterday. I was super, super happy with the outcome. And all of that brings us to today. Like I said on Monday, this is like graduation. And what I thought would make sense in this process and would be a super nice challenge would be to say, okay, what have I learned throughout this week? You know, if I have to try and put all these things together, try and use all the information that I've gathered, and mind you, this has been blind information. This is very almost like ignorant information because the way I've collected all this information is just by observation, you know, repetition and observation. I've looked at a bunch of photographs. I've looked at a ton of videos of elephants doing just about anything. So I thought that for today, I would try to do a very expressive version of this elephant that would feel personal and where I could just have fun with it. Because I think that my goal when I want to learn something is to appropriate it in the end. I want to use the information that I've gathered to then do something that feels like I can have fun with it, something that feels my own. You know, to me, if I don't enjoy painting, if I don't enjoy what I do, it makes no sense. I mean, I'm always challenging myself, so it's always going to be frustration and a bunch of suffering. But in the end, at the end of the day, every single day, I enjoyed my painting session. You know, I go to bed thinking, that was damn cool. That was super cool that I dedicated myself to learn about this and to paint this today. It is something that's incredibly fulfilling. So for today, I was like, let's try and see how much I understood about the construction of this elephant and let's make it into a character. Yesterday, I told you guys, I'm not at all good at character design. I'm not. I'm not Wesley Burt. Wes is absolutely amazing, amazing. I didn't mention him on Monday, but I think he did an elephant warrior. I think it was for a magic card, maybe, but it is so damn cool. And I'm going to ask Danny to show it to you guys right now, but I didn't look at Wes's work because first of all, I'd be horribly depressed because he is absolutely amazing. And second of all, because I want to abide by the same rules that I had set out for myself in the beginning of the week. So no looking at other artists, no looking at the ways in which people that I wholly respect, like Wes, have treated the subject matter. Because I think that as soon as I do, as soon as I look into what they've done, then it is kind of over for me. Because they're going to be so overwhelming, especially when they're such talented people, 
that all I'm going to be able to see and all I'm going to be able to recognize is all the manners in which they have solved an issue, but it's going to be impossible for me to assess what is my own, what am I actually contributing into this, and I'm probably going to end up copying all these fantastic ways in which they have solved, in this case, an elephant. So yeah, so Wes is amazing at character design. He's absolutely incredible. That goes without saying. I'm doing something far, far simpler for today because that's all I can manage. But I'm still going to have fun with it because this is what I wanted to do for today. So so what I did was something super, super cool. I thought about Hellboy because I always do. I think he's an incredible character. I think Mike is a genius. So I was thinking, is there an elephant in Hellboy? And maybe I'm mistaken. You know, I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of bigger fans out there than myself. But all I can think of is this moment in Hellboy in Hell when Hellboy recognizes a painting. And I think uh, Sir Edward is the one that says, yeah, that painting is done by Walter Heap and it's death riding an elephant. But it's really funny because I remember that, you know, at the end of the comic book, at the end of the uh, paperback, I think it was, there's this little snippet of Walter Edmund Heap, the, you know, this fictitious painter where Mike is like, yeah, Heap never really achieved uh, any success as a painter. And if I remember correctly, he says that he's you know, died tragically mauled by a tiger or eaten by a tiger or something like that. So I thought, well, you know, death riding an elephant, that's actually a super, super cool thing. And if you know a little bit about Hellboy, death is just written in his history. Death surrounds his destiny. You know, there's this idea of him being absolutely powerless against his refusal time and again to fulfill this destiny. So I thought, well, if this is death riding an elephant, you know, this is the elephant that carries death, it'd be cool if this elephant would be a protector of Excalibur. Hellboy is actually a descendant of King Arthur. So he is the rightful heir to the throne of England, and he can wield Excalibur. The only thing is, as soon as he decides to take the sword out of the stone, then he's going to have the armies of Hell and the armies of King Arthur ready to fight for him. So it's a big, wonderful mess. But I thought that this elephant would be a super cool character that could be guarding Excalibur. And I thought it would be super cool if it could be like an upright elephant with his trunk wrapping around Excalibur because I didn't want to animate the elephant, you know, fully. Uh, I think humanizing that elephant, it would have made a ton of things a whole lot easier because... An upright elephant is just a pain in the ass. It's incredible to try and solve, but it's so, so weird because it makes no sense for an elephant to be upright. I mean, its whole body is just constructed to be on four legs. So for an elephant to put all that weight on its hind legs, and we've talked about how those back legs are not really that powerful. They're not really super, super strong. Again, an elephant could crush us with its tail. So every single moment in an elephant is far more powerful than any idea that we have of strength. But regardless, those legs are not meant to carry the elephant's weight when it's upright. So it is a very, very weird, strange thing to see an elephant standing up. And the other thing is, I didn't want to give him hands. I didn't want to give him elbows even. You know, an elephant pretty much has knees you know, for his hind legs, obviously, but for his front legs, I, it has to be one of the only mammals that has two pairs of knees. So the way they walk is actually incredibly particular. And I told myself, well, I could give him fingers, you know, I could give him opposable thumbs. You could turn his uh, front legs into arms and you could imagine that they would be capable of pronation and subination. But I told myself, no, 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 no. Let's try to animate this character but let's keep it real. I mean, <laughs> I mean, as real as the uh, guardian of Excalibur being an elephant could be. But I thought, no, these front legs, they have to behave like elephant legs. So they're going to be useless in a way. He could never carry that sword. He can't hold that sword. That's why he needs that trunk. I contemplated the idea of him being capable of taking out the sword whenever he wants. You know, he maybe he's like the super powerful magical being and he's like the only person that could do that. And the only reason he would do that is just to defend the right heir to the sword, which would be Hellboy. Um, I don't know. I still haven't figured that one out. Like I said, 
my character design experience, I would say it's uh, in its infancy. So, But that doesn't detract from the fact that I can get super excited about these things. So to round this all up, I thought this would be a guardian elephant. He would stand on his hind legs. He would be upright. I mean, as upright as an elephant could be. What would be his arms, you know, his front legs, they would you know, be true to the gesture and to the mechanics of an elephant that walks on its four legs. I wanted to be faithful to that idea and to those mechanics. And just to give him like a Hellboyish character, you know, the drop shoulders, because Hellboy shoulders are just magical. That beautiful triangle shape that Magnola is just amazing at doing. Um, I wanted to push that, so I thought, well, what can we do with those ears? And I thought, well, maybe he looks less menacing if I just kind of tuck them in and it would be super cool because you see this cute elephant guarding the most powerful sword in the universe. Take that, He-Man. And, uh, <laughs> and I imagine that if you challenged him, if you approached him and you wanted to take Scalibur out, his ears would just perk up and he would stand even more upright, not just kind of like hunching over, but stand even more upright. And he would become this huge, menacing, raging elephant. And I thought that sort of transformation, that Mumra transformation would be super, super cool. But anyways, that was the idea that I had for today. I'm never going to shy away from having fun. For me, painting has to be enjoyable. I'm sorry, but painting is such an amazing thing that why not make it fun? You know, why not finish a session of painting, especially a session of painting that is challenging? Why not culminate it? with a smile on your face, why not think that it was worth it and that it was fun and you were grinning all the way, kind of like I'm doing right now. As I'm doing this voiceover, I'm just thinking about this character and I'm loving it. I even wrote Mike. I was like, Mike, you know, I'm going to do this with this character. And he was like, yeah, I love those legs. So if Mike liked the legs of my death elephant character, I'm pretty happy. I'm going to take that as a win. And I think it's a great conclusion to an amazing week. So that's going to be it for today. As we say on Fridays, Danny and I thank you for the opportunity that you give us week after week for being a company, even if it's for 15, 20 minutes a day. And all we ask is that you give us a chance so that we could earn your trust and we could be your company for next week. Next week, we're going to be here. It's going to be a new theme, but I think I mentioned it before, but I'm super excited because things are opening back right now. And you guys know that one of the things that I love doing is doing workshops. And I'm going to finally be able to do a physical workshop. It's going to take place in Rome. We have all the necessary permits to do that. It's going to be two weeks. That's going to be amazing. But that means that in the first couple of weeks of July, uh, we're not going to be here. Danny needs a rest. She's amazing. She deserves it. She's incredible. So that's going to be well-deserved rest for her. And me, I'm going to be in Rome teaching for those two weeks, which is going to be super awesome. And no worries. After the workshop, we'll be super energized. And we will be back to doing the thing that we love to do, which is, you know, making videos for you guys. So I'll give you guys a heads up when exactly that break is going to be. Next week, we have a new theme. So we're going to be here. So we'll see you guys next week. As always, thank you guys. Love you. Bye.